I am Chandi Arora. I am I am Shivangi, and we are from the Young Reporters for the Environment Team, and we are reporting on the ICSC 2022 conference. And today we have with us Mr. Richard McDonnell, who is an executive of the Futures Group. So, sir, I would like for you to give a brief introduction about yourself and Futures Group and what you hope to be doing. Certainly, I'll try and do that fairly briefly. I spent all my career in uh, schools first as a teacher and then as a school director uh, and I spent 18 years as head of a, an international boarding school in Switzerland called Eglon College and I've recently stepped out of that position uh, to launch a company called Our Futures Group and the idea of this is to pull together people who are working towards schools that are focused on the future, a sustainable future and hence my interest in, in being involved in the future of sustainable education and education for sustainability. So uh, what motivated you to start the Futures R group? What was that igniting flame? Okay, that's a very good question. I think very often in our lives we have little uh, ambitions that sit in our heart exactly. and we just wait for the right moment to be able to give them their true opportunity and voice. So after many years of leading in a school, I was thinking, what can I do to impact even more lives? In a school, I do believe we have great impact because we're shaping people who are the leaders and the examples of the future. Uh, but I was thinking, if I can do this work in one school, can I do it in many schools or in countries so that we can scale up the speed uh, uh, and we can accelerate towards some of the urgent goals established by uh, by the S SDG framework. Yes, so uh, coming to the next question. I mean, if you look at it from an Indian perspective, uh, sustainability education, environment education in schools is a compulsory subject. And uh, it has made very monotonous because of theoretical aspects to it. So what are your views on uh, you know, environment education? Should it be more theoretical classroom based or should it be an activity based approach? I think there's another question that lies behind your question and that is about pedagogical styles. In other words, the way we teach and the way we learn. Uh, uh, I think it's greatly to the credit in India that it is a required part of the curriculum because I think in many countries it's just a, a little nice to have that fills a little slot on a Wednesday afternoon or something. So this is an important signal from the country that this really matters. I think that's the great strength. But the danger is sometimes when you make something compulsory, you switch people off. It's just another subject you have to do at school and maybe you're not inspired by your teacher or you're not inspired by the subject and it can have a negative effect. So for me, the key there is probably not to say, let's take it out of schools, but it's how do we reform our approaches to teaching, our styles of teaching, our styles of learning, so that we hear more student voice. I'm a great believer in promoting intergenerational conversations. And I think too often you have one if you like, older generation instructing a younger generation. And it's one-way traffic. And for me, the important thing is how do we say, for the people who are going to be running the world in 20, 2050, uh, we talk about trying to reach a net zero by 2030 or 2050 or 2070. The people running in the, the, the world at that time are in schools now. So we need to engage them in meaningful intergenerational conversations. And that's where I think there's a great opportunity for India to continue to look at how we teach, how our schools, what's the culture in our schools. If we can develop cultures in schools that are more interactive and less instructional, I think we'll release a lot of this creative energy and real desire because I think young people, they do care and they do want to see change, but maybe their love and passion is damped because it's just another school subject. Mm -hmm. yeah, I feel like it's about bridging the communication gap between the generations. Mm -hmm. I feel like then the conversation will be more clear. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, sustainable development is all about the future generation. We associate it with future generation and future generation is current young generation. So I myself was a class 12 student 
So, uh, how can we, how can we as a student successfully interlink journalism and uh, environment and make it a success true? Well, I think you you have a very powerful opportunity as through the networks of journalism because you're at the heart of communication. So your challenge is how do you get transformational messages to large audiences in ways that excite them and are compelling and give them the real appetite to say, I want to be part of this change, not I fear this change or I resist this change, it's going to ruin my life, I like my life the way it is, and I want to have all the things that I've seen other people have. So there's work to be done, I think, in journalism in sustaining some idealism and present to a wider public personal examples, and they may be very small stories or maybe they may be bigger stories, to tell these stories that will inspire other people to say, actually, that would give more meaning to my life to pursue these kind of activities than just saying, you know, when am I going to upgrade my iPhone to the latest model? Uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, when we talk about climate change there's a lot of anxiety about it and there's a term eco anxiety a lot of young people and I think Greta Thunberg last year talked about this she also suffered from eco anxiety so you know in a way we are exposed to so much information all at once you know what is a better way to tackle subject like this you know so that it doesn't result in people getting more anxious Okay, I, I think we have to accept that eco-anxiety is a real thing, yes. and it's understandable, because anxiety is what I would call, I would define anxiety as the anticipation of fear, which is an even stronger emotion. Uh, fear is a very strong emotion that shapes our behavior, and typically, when we're fearful, we do one of three things, we fight, or we fight. fly, and fight, flight, or freeze. Those are the three responses that we're biologically wired to do, either do nothing, or to do something towards the danger, or something away from the danger. And a little bit of fear is maybe a good thing for us, because until now, I think people have been quite complacent. They hear about change, they hear about this, Without a anxiety and fear, we don't have a sense of urgency of action. So we, I don't think if, I think if we remove the anxiety, we'll remove the urgency. What we don't want it to do is become the kind of fear that can be very destructive in communities and, and destructive to our own health and destructive to the health of our communities. Because fear can also lead to um, conflict. So I think our big challenge is in addressing anxiety is that when people see that something is being done and progress is being made, that, that can help to relieve our anxiety and it replaces it with another big motivator in life. And the big motivator in life is personal satisfaction and joy. And I think if we can replace fear with hope and joy, that will be a great accelerator. Um, I don't think you can have only hope and joy without fear, but I think if you have only fear, then that will really, um, I don't think that will lead us to a, a, a harmonious world for the future. So with that, uh, before yeah. wrapping up, we would like to ask you to convey your message to do all the young minds out there. Because okay. they need a right direction right Great. now about environment, about SDGs. Yes, I think my view is, is my advice, particularly to people here in India, is stop thinking about environmental science and studies as just another school subject. This is about real lives and about real impacts. And it may be the way in which you as an individual or as a group can have a really meaningful impact on, on the world. And don't be afraid of thinking my, the actions of one person just, it's just not going to make a difference. If we allow that mindset to be established, nobody would do anything. And then we really, we, we would have a, a, a rapidly accelerating problem. So never think to yourself, my one little change, the one little habit I change 
isn't going to make a difference. You are permanently an example to others who will look at you and say, yeah, I can, if they can do that, I can do it. And then rather like small rivers that come down from the mountain and gradually join forces, the more of these little tributary rivers of, of individual effort come together, the more we can build a really big, powerful current, like a big river, that can move us and accelerate us towards a better world, not just for you as the young, because soon you will be replaced by another young generation. So we have to think of this in a multi-generational way. We're not building the future for the next generation, we're building it forever. Good luck and go for it. Thank you so much.